one of the things I didn't realize, and, and I found this when, when looking into you, is there's this guy called Vince Duron, Duronda? Duronda. Duronda. And so I, I'd never heard of him. And um, pretty interesting story. So, so maybe it would be good, certainly for me mm-hmm. and for anyone else that's listening, that is fascinating about this, this sort of bodybuilding history is who was he and, and what did he do? What, what was the part that he played in that sort of early days of the, of the bodybuilding like, world? He was, he was actually a stuntman. He was in Hollywood. He was a stuntman. And uh, he was always fit. He, he had this body on him as a young man, a nice little V-tapered body. Um, and he would always help all the movie stars, help them start getting in shape. He'd show them his little things to do. Um, and that morphed into him opening his uh, gym in Studio City. And so he was starting to get recognized as the guy to go to. He started getting Larry Scott, Mohammed Makaway, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Everybody ended up going to him. Even Joe Weider sent his champions to Vince to train them and get them in top shape to compete under his name. So he wasn't the trainer. Vince Garanda was a trainer. Mm. So, um, and he's pretty much all the top guys from that era were trained by Vince Garanda. So um, you talk about... You talk about an Einstein of bodybuilding. This guy was crazy out of belief. I mean, if you didn't do what he told you, he'd throw something at you. You did abdominals during your workout, he'd throw something at you. If you didn't listen to him, he'd throw you out of his gym. And he was a real, he was a master kinesiologist. And he knew the functions of the body. He goes, you don't need heavy weight. You don't need all that crazy stuff you're doing. You just need to slow it down, engage the muscle, and work that muscle to its capacity. Mm. And... Uh, I don't know if you wanted to tell me my story with Vince. Yeah, I was, that's, that's what I was going to sort of lead on to. You know, what, what was the impact that he had on you and your training philosophy, I, I guess, at that young age? Changed my whole world. Um, you know, I, I'd heard about him. I'd read a little spiffs about him. I'd seen his little booklets, his little four-page booklets, you know, for four ninety five or three ninety five, or whatever they were back then. And... Uh, how I got to meet him was through a gentleman named Phil Tauber, who was, I didn't know at the time, was a multimillionaire real estate guy, who had walked into my gym and said, can I work out with you? You know, uh, he, he was looking for a trainer, and then he ended up working out with me and uh, my, my uh, training partner, was it, I uh, can't remember, Pat Bulldog. And uh, I said, well, there's no trainers here, why don't you just work out with us? And he goes, I can't work out with you guys. Look at the size of you guys are monsters, 285, 295 pounds. I go, no, 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 we'll strip it off. We'll we'll help you. So as a whole week of training, he didn't say a word to us of who he was until the last day. And he says, do you mind if I showed you something? And me and my partner looked at each other like, you're going to show us something? (laughs) You know, we're the young bulls here in San Diego. Um, And he ended up kicking our butts. He said, just the bar, bar dips, and just do it my way. And literally, I could not move for three days. I'm like, oh, what is this? He goes, this comes from Vince Garanda. And I go, I know that name. He goes, I write his books, his booklets. I do his animations. Mm. My wife's related to Joe Weider. And I said, wow. He goes, uh, let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to write you a check, and I want you to go see Vince Garanda. And he hands me this check. And at that time, I looked at it, I went, that's too much money. I, no. What did he give you he the check like, for? To pay Vince. Oh, okay. All he goes, right. he goes cool. for, for allowing me to work out with you and your humbleness to work out with me, not even question my six foot three, 180 pound body, and then allowing me to show you what I have. It's like, I'm going to give something to you that's going to change your life. He goes, please go see him. So I took the check and I said, okay, you know, he, and he told me as Arnold's trainer, this and that. He told me all the accolades he did. I said, okay. So I ended up going to see Vince, and uh, here I am, a young buck of 23, or I'm sorry, 21 at that time. 21 years old, I walk in his door, and Vince looks at me, and he goes, you look good, you look good. He goes, show me what you got. And I showed him with weight, how much I'm doing, how strong I was. He let me talk. Just do what you do, let me see. He goes, you've done good so far. you got a great physique. And he goes, but you've been doing it all wrong. I said, what do you mean I've been doing it all wrong? He goes, you're using too much weight. Your form's way off. Your symmetry's off. He goes, let's, let's rebuild. Let's rebuild you. He goes, you're here to see me. I'm the master. You're the student. I said, yeah, but I could bench 500 pounds. I could do this. He literally grabbed that check, threw it at my chest, says, get the hell out of my gym. 
get the hell out of my gym right now. And I go, whoa, 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 whoa. He goes, who's the master? Who's the student? He goes, I said, you're the master. I'm the student. He goes, just do what I tell you to do. <laughs> One week of training, all the stuff I'd learned prior to out the window. I was so sore, I couldn't scratch my head. And I'm talking about minimal weights, like an eighth of what I've ever used. And he taught me, he goes, this is body mechanics. This is how the body actually moves. This is how you work. Um, this is what he did. He actually grabbed the pencil and he said, see this pencil? I want you to grab that 40 pound dumbbell. Now I want you to curl that 40 pound dumbbell like I do this pencil. I could get a better workout with this pencil than you can with that 40 pound dumbbell. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why. He goes, because I'm going to squeeze the hell out of that pencil and I'm going to go up slow, 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 and then down slow and then squeeze my arm from all the way up and down. He said, so give me that 40 pound dumbbell and I want you to do that with a pencil. After about 15 reps, I went, holy, I could feel everything firing. He goes, okay, now here's a 20 pound dumbbell and I want you to do the same thing. He goes, it's, it's the contraction. He goes, and the key phrase that he used that stuck with me all my life is full range of motion mm -hmm. and the state of contraction. I said, what does that mean? He says, they always talk about full range of motion of the skeletal form, but not full range of motion of the muscular form. So this is skeletal, this is muscular. So you want to stay in that short mm -hmm. three-quarter range so you don't pull on the tendons, ligaments, uh, rotator cuffs, all that stuff that you'll actually hurt yourself. So lower the weight, slow it down, activate more muscle tissue. I literally grew one whole inch on my whole body on the first month. Um, from that and you were year, training a long time before, so it weren't like you was just... Oh, yeah, it was, it was incredible jump. Oh. It was incredible how the muscle, mm. every little individual muscle changed because he taught me three sides to a muscle. Mm. Every muscle has three sides to it. Develop each one. Don't overtrain. Don't undertrain. Go right down the middle. Feed it properly and get proper rest. So talk about 44 years of Vince's training as my foundation, and that's where I've created all my champions. So on, on that for a second, with um, like he, that, that was going back some time before yeah. you know, the people I mentioned and, and some of the recent people. And, and it went through a phase where with, with, I guess Dorian was the first one that kind of really took on that extreme weight. And, yeah. and it was followed up by people like Coleman, etc. But so what you're saying makes a lot of sense, particularly now at my age. And, and the more I've learned about it, and if you look at a lot of the research now, that is obviously a safer and more effective way of doing it. So two, two questions. One is, how do you think he sort of came up with that before everybody else had sort of gone through different stages and now actually realized 20, 30 years later, that this is, or 40 years later, this is a better way of doing it. And then secondly, uh, what, why do you think that, um, that some of those ideas didn't stick through the phase where people just lift a ridiculous amount of weight and, and created all these injuries mm -hmm. as a result of that. I think it's like anything else. People always want to f uh, find a better way, a new way, somehow to do it. Everybody that I've taken in, I don't care who it is, Olympic athletes, I've trained Olympic athletes, um, PD Devers, Gail Devers from gold medalist, um, NFL, San Diego Chargers. Right now we're currently training New York Giants uh, Denver Broncos and um, uh, Seattle Seahawks uh, players, brand new, they're just playing right now. And they've, they're coming in and they're like going, we've never felt anything like this, what is this? And it's because it's lighter weight, the Eagles are put away. It's not about heavy weight. And I tell them, I said, don't worry about the heavy weight. And that's the one thing I learned back then with Vince, is don't worry about the heavy weight. In time, you will be doing that heavy weight, but 20 times. Not once or twice, 20 times. So when I take people through now and they come in and said, I'm in great shape, I could do this, you know, it's like, come on, old man, I'm 62 years old. And most people can't hold a candle to me in the gym. They're like, I can't do this, I'm gonna throw up, I'm gonna pass out. What is this? What is this, this, this type of training? And I always go, Vince taught me this and I've formulated my own composition of this based on what he has done, but never going away from it. And it, and it was that fundamental um, knowledge that he gave me that it's based on contraction, not weight. You can make a 20 pound dumbbell feel like a 50 pound dumbbell just on slow motion, slow motion contraction. Even Mike Messer and Ray Messer, 
learned that with the guy that invited uh, Arthur Jones with the Polaris equipment. Slow and then slow. One set of chest press, one set of this, one set of that, walk out the 20 minutes, that's your workout. So now it's ego. Now people are egotistical or they want, I bench 500 pounds. I go, that's great. Are you a power lifter or a bodybuilder? Are you a bodybuilder or are you a body sculptor? Vince always said, you're not even a bodybuilder, Danny. You're a body sculptor. You're sculpting bodies. You're sculpting your own body. Now you're going to go out and sculpt other people's bodies. So ego aside, it's hard to get men away from that heavy weight thing. They think mm. heavy weight is yeah, bigger it's muscles. Just, it, it's a, like you say, it's a, particularly when you're younger, it's like yeah. how many plates you got on. That's, that's the conversation, isn't it? It's like, yeah. well, how many plates you got on there? Oh, yeah. But um, when, when, like me, you know, I've done quite a bit of damage to my back and knees over the years by being, doing stupid stuff when I was in my teen and mm-hmm. early 20s. And I suppose now you realize that you, you really pay a price for that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Which, uh, which, isn't, which isn't good. So, so one of the things that, I, when I read up about Vince, he quoted that it was, um, you know, building a great body is 85% nutrition. Um, so I guess the, it's the other sort of 15% is training. Is that, yeah. is that sort of? It's pretty, it's pretty darn close. He was a man, a, like I said, he's an Einstein. It's just like anybody else. It's like this guy that in, with Tesla. He comes out of nowhere. And now he's, you know, multi-billionaire and he knows he's got all this technology. Somehow he figured this out. Something was implanted in him that he, he loved the body so much. He actually went to uh, um, autopsies and looked at cadavers and looked at the muscles. He says, I literally looked at the muscles, pulled the skin back, looking at where the insertion points were. Hmm. He goes, and then that's what interested me in kinesiology. It's like how the body works in conjunction to exercise and not to work against the body, but work with it, like a gymnast does, uh, like a dancer does. So he goes, you look at a dancer, you look at a gymnast, look at their bodies. They don't even use weight. They use their right. body weight. Yeah. Look how beautiful their bodies are. He goes, so now, fundamentally, that's what we do. We use these weights as tools, as sculpting tools to sculpt our bodies. So we're actually looking at individual muscles, and we're creating each individual muscle to come out to give them that three-dimensional look and have symmetry. He was all about symmetry. No steroids, no this, no that, no bulk, symmetry. He goes on stage, when they look at you all, you're not gonna go, look at the size of his arms, they're gonna go, wow, look at that physique. Mm -hmm. Look at the size of his legs. No, look at at him overall, he's like a Greek statue. So that was his thing, and he got in my head, I go, oh, it's not about size. He goes, no, because you look different on stage than you do here. You look way bigger on stage because of the lighting, the cuts, the definition everything and it creates that illusion. illusion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you've heard it. Yeah. <laughs>